you can have the ocean road where she's 224 by 43 feet and truly these hulls are some of the finest science and expedition hulls ever built in the world the government has just built a new model of this vessel and it's costing 160 million dollars a copy ice class uh, diesel electric everything is built on resilient mounts a very qu quiet smooth vessel our men you know who have had 20 30 years of experience say that that's the finest ship they've ever sailed on in their lives I think there was about nine built of the stalwart class but they were they were they were designed to for very quiet running specially designed running gear and propellers so they could in the 80s and the 90s they could listen to uh, for nuclear submarine uh, sound signatures this vessel for example this holds um, it, they didn't spare a dime uh, this everything is built to the utmost uh, strength and redundancy this vessel holds about carries about a quarter of a million gallons of fuel and they burn oh at 10 knots about 1600 a day so 1800 in that general range so you can go around the world large a-frames obviously um, cranes but these vessels are ideal for an expedition yacht uh, conversion uh, they have they're heavily built very quiet diesel electric propulsion and um, low fuel consumption extremely redundant systems and lots of room in this ship there's great head height overhead height a lot of volume you can build some great spaces without spending a lot of money on the interior and the rice class so you can go to the arctic and obviously at the world at, they're starting to flow through and around uh, you know go up and around the Arctic and make some of these for around the all the way around the pole uh, transits these uh, vessels would be ideal for something like that but this would be a great area for a sky lounge here um, as well or this just could be an outside seating deck area and then still have the large stern area you can see the overhead height here is substantial as we're standing now, the pilot house deck is, you can see, elevated there ahead of the stack. Um, and we've got that deck and then this deck from the main deck. We're, we're on the third deck above the main deck and that's the fourth deck above the main deck. So lots of height, a lot great visibility, lots of room. This would be ideal to you just take this area and you pour it either a, an epoxy teak or a regular teak deck on, on an area like this would be beautiful. Great foredeck. You could put launches on the foredeck if you wanted to. This, this is a, a large foredeck. Hydraulically driven anchor gear, all, all sub decks. So all the anchor winches and the, and the hydraulic drives and all that are below the deck. Very little maintenance ideal for a world-class expedition vessel. Big pilot house area though. On the ocean stall with the sister ship to this, we just put a full DP station up here and moved it forward. And, and, and it turned out very nice. And then we have large settees either side. So this, this, this space is large enough to have a wonderful pilot house area and then a great lounge bar settee area here for owners. Um, it's ideal. Then a bimini out over the stern. Over, over after the pilot house. But you can look at the head height there. The uh, height you know, is, uh, is great. The volume is great. This room has got to be, you know, 25 feet wide. If it's uh, 27 feet wide, just by itself, just in the width of the, this pilot house lounge area. And then the length is, is close to 30. So you have almost 700 square feet just in this area alone. Just an estimate, but. Uh, great space for the guests and the crew to work together sail the ship and to enjoy the voyage five the width in this space is about 35 feet and the length on this space is about 70 so you have about 2200 square feet on this deck alone great overhead height um, a, a wonderful owner's uh, uh, stateroom area fire rated stairways and stairwells going up and down throughout Here's the build plaque, the USS, USNS Indomitable. I mean, she was built for the Navy as part of this program. This hull was delivered in 85, built here in Tacoma, Washington by Tacoma Boat Building. And of course, this was built for the uh, Navy Subsea Surface Warfare Program. 
I mean, look at the overhead you have for ventilation and ducting. I mean, look how much space. You have almost 28 to 30 inches just for um, sheet metal ducting and overhead services and supplies for when, when you do convert this over to a, a expedition yacht. So it's a, these are all ingredients for a successful conversion with, that, that, is re, that can be done at a, at a reasonable price point. These are all joiner bulkheads, so you can just strip these out of here and open this space up. This vessel is built with very few structural bulkheads, but anyway, large spaces with, with um, minimal structural interferences, which makes it, once again, you can put a, you can come in here and put an interior package in that's pre-constructed out, out of updated panels and your surfaces on them and do it in a way that, is, that can go in very quickly. This is an access hatch that so goes right through the engine. You can pull your main engines out of here if you needed to. Awful nice. And they're not buried inside the ship. Not that you'd ever have to. There's four generators, four propulsion generators, and she runs on two and keeps two in reserve all the time. You can put them all online if you need them, but she runs quite nicely with two propulsion generators. But if you ever had to pull a full package out, you could do it right through this hatch. These are obviously large lab areas. I probably ultimately would you can use this space uh, for a large upper sky lounge, you know, or you could cut it off and remove it and replace it, and make it all glass all the way around here. Be interested to see what uh, the designer comes up with. It. Tell you this boat, you can really do a lot. And you know, you can do it so reasonably well because you can bring in a joiner company like MSC or US Joiner or, you know, BIP or any of those, NORAC, and you can put a joiner package in this thing quickly. Look at this space. Look at this deck. This deck is, is a, almost 100 feet long by itself. And this is an upper deck. This isn't even a, the main deck. This is a, an accommodation deck. Let's see if we were in a, in, a, in, a, in a big sky lounge here. And then you have a set of double doors that open up that it, up, to your, up to that passageway. And then you'd have your guest staterooms off to either side with small balconies. And beautiful. Once again, join your bulkheads, right? Now this is steel on this side, so these are steel. This is steel on the starboard side and then joiner on the port. So you could take this and open this all the way up that direction. So we're up in the four deck area. This is the second deck. Um, this is the emergency generator, emergency power. So there's, you know, emergency, you can run the whole ship here from its uh, 300 kW emergency generator over on the side, Caterpillar. And then forward here is all storage locker. Boats locker, lines, support, and there's an, a, a, a dumbwaiter, an elevator type shaft. It's really, it's, it's mechanical, but it goes all the way down deep for carrying lots of lines and gear. These ships are made to go offshore for a year at a time. So, Because look at this deck. Here's another 100 foot long deck. Beautiful deck. And look at the width of the halls. I mean, these passageways, you know, almost two meters wide. You know, comfortable. You can see some beautiful cherry or the beautiful hardwoods just flowing down through here. Oh my gosh, it's a marble inlay. This would be a blast to convert. A big walk in freezers and reefers. Great capacity. Redundant compressor systems. So, large galley storage area. I mean, it just goes around the corner, it just goes and goes. So. Easily, easily could take stores for months at a time. Has a hospital, you know, which is awful nice, quite honestly. You know, you wouldn't want to change this. There's no reason to. I would keep a hospital on a ship for this size because who knows where you're going to end up going. For this would be a great crew galley area, crew, crew, yeah, crew, uh, crew lounge. It's right, it's forward of the galley, and then a, a great, great commercial galley already. But a nice commercial galley already set up. And then another dining area, you know. So once again, this could all be for crew, crew lounge, crew galley area. And then a lot of crew galleys and lounges, you know, they're below deck. They're stuck down the bowels of the ship. And you can see this with some large portholes, some big glass, a lot of glass on this side. And what a great place for the crew. Machine shop, you know, and of course it may or may not stay in this location. Although it's really nice if you're going to have skiffs and launches and ROVs and AUVs and submarines, having this right adjacent to the back deck is awful nice with a lathe and all its components. 
So probably at the end of the day, it probably would stay right close. But she's got the four 398s, and like I said, you know, you can run anywhere from two, three, or four, depending on your speed. I mean, they have, they get, they live a long time. They're great engines. They're very inexpensive to rebuild. You can rebuild these engines for sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars a piece, um, and um, they they have a long life. And of course, you know. You're probably talking having to rebuild every maybe five or ten years on something, a vessel of this nature. So we're not talking much money. Repair and maintenance costs for the main engine and propulsion would be very limited. <clears throat> Once again, redundancy and everything from air compressors to centrifuges for your oil and everything's pretty much state of the art, I would say in general. You know, they haven't changed. A lot of these things, a lot of this equipment is very similar and or has been replaced to newer standards. This is the control space. Um, same thing, there's propulsion control, you know, here for your engineer. It's air conditioned and quiet here when it's running. Yeah, one guy can, with a helper, you know, it's a big ship, so you have maintenance going on, but one person can run everything from here with, without a question. But uh, when you, you, you'd have more than what you'd have an assistant engineer as well, of course. But. Yeah, for this expedition, this, this vessel would be ideal for you know that uh, so that submarine ROV AUV expedition for going halfway around the world. So, and if you're doing that and more of a, on that that expedition on a com uh, that style of expedition on a commercial basis, you end up having you know you get at least three engineers and an assistant. This boat generally runs a nine to eleven man crew, depending on how how, how hard you're going to work and where you're going. This is the propulsion motor room. These are the two drive motors. They're 800 horsepower <coughs> each. <coughs> General Electric. They turn a maximum of 180 RPM. And no gearbox, no reduction, so they're very slow turning. And most of the turn time, you'll be cruising at 150, 160 RPM. You won't be pushing them too hard. Tank top, flat level. These are your freshwater pressure tanks, you know, for your, just your portable water systems. Fuel transfer, some ballast transfer lines. No, 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 no gearbox, no reduction gear, no nothing. It's a straight drive. The only thing you have is a thrust bearing there and a shaft brake. Straight drive, very smooth. You sit down here and they're just, but they're just humming like this. Just, they could go from where you're doing a quarter of a knot right up to full speed. Mm -hmm. It's great for when you have ROVs, AUVs, toys in the water that you're doing sub. You know, you're using some subsea equipment. You can maneuver around them with the large bow thruster and these two propulsion motors. You can maneuver around them very nicely. And if you want to add dynamic positioning onto this ship, the yeah, ship is ideal for adding dynamic positioning because it's already diesel electric. So it's a matter of interfacing the DP system with the electric con motor controls, which works very well. We've done one and worked out beautifully. And uh, we added one stern thruster in the keel. And we put, I think it's a 600 horsepower stern thruster in the keel. We already had a 500 horsepower in the bow. And you, that blended with these two propulsion motors gave the vessel phenomenal maneuverability. Very in, inexpensive DP upgrade. It was, it was very reasonably priced. Reasonably priced. And this boat is just, you know, this boat has just come out of dry dock. Had a brand new five year on her hull and machinery. So she's still a little messy because the, 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 you know, the, uh, rudders were pulled and the shafts were pulled and inspected and all of that but she's ready to go around the world this is an exciting ship it, 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 this is this is an exciting ship from which you could as, as a, as, it, it's a phenomenal foundation for an expedition yacht it, this this hull with a minor conversion could be one of the finest expedition yachts in the world it truly could be from a quality, capability, the, 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 uh, and a holistic blend from everything from the diesel electric propulsion. I mean, its propeller shafts only turn it on 150 RPM. It's slow, it is smooth, it is efficient. Um, and then it's ice glass construction, it's heavy steel construction along with its volume. Wonderful ship to travel, take a family on, take a group on an adventure, and, and you can spend a lifetime on the ocean on a ship like this.